Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskies. Today I have two limited editions, special releases from the same distillery. Now this is a 10 year old single malt from the Ellsburn distillery. This was a distillery exclusive, 57.3% ABV, whiskey base 247902. I was at the distillery when this was released, only 200 bottles. This is First Fill Oloroso and First Fill Pedro Ramirez Sherry casks exclusively and it had a price of 149 euros. The very, very first age statement release of the distillery. Now they've been making whiskey longer. Um, if I look here, since 2002 they've been making whiskey but only now have they released a 10 year old statement. This on the other hand is the first of the core range products that they have an age statement on. This is whiskey base 249538. This is batch one of their 10 year old whiskey. It says distillery edition. This was only available at the distillery with 200 bottles. This is German wide release with a thousand bottles, not that many more to be honest. And this is Pedro Jimenez Oloroso. This is first fill sherry casks from Jerez and Spain. I have a theory. Um, 48%. And the recommended retail price, 149, cast strength, distillery exclusive, 134.90. And my question is, before I even open up the boxes here, how much should a 10 year old single malt whiskey cost? Now, we could think about it from the American point of view. We have craft distillers that are not 10 years age yet. Think New Riff, their first 10 year old product isn't even on the market. Sagamore isn't on the market. Wilderness Trail isn't on the market. We don't even have 10 year old products yet. Now we have a few distilleries in Germany that have 10 year old product. There's one down by Frankfurt called Galors. They put out their first 10 year old product in a 0 0.5, um, a 0 0.5 liter bottle, 119 euros, two years ago. And it's still in the shops. It didn't set out and it was only one cask. Um, we have a place called Nine Springs. Last year they brought out their nine year old. This year they're bringing out their 10 year old, finally. And we also had here um, a from a German distillery, uh, Malta, Scotland. It's called the Westphalian. They have also 0 0.5 liter um, German single malts that have come out on the market for 100 euros. So um, paying 100 euros for 0 0.5 is a lot of money. Basically the same price as this. And so it's really, really the question of what should we be paying for a 10 year old handmade small distillery whiskey. Now, I thought about this for three seconds before I bought this. It's castoring, 57.3%. It was a distillery exclusive. I was at the distillery. You always bring something home from the distillery if you can visit a distillery, if, if possible. And so this was like, okay, 194. Okay, it was those three seconds I thought about it. Now this at 134 as the normal drinking strength ABV at 48%. Ow, that's a little bit too much. Now people started undercutting each other. It's been on the market now for a whole month and there are still 18 shops that have some of the 1,000 bottles left. And instead of 134.90, they're now at 125.90. I'm sure they're going to con continue to cut each other a little bit, um, the price of each other. Now, the first time I got this box, I was like, oh, that's nice. That's very, very good. Um, I opened it up and I was like, hey, why is the bottle in here? Oh, all right. They did it like this. <laughs> they put the bottle like that. I was like, why did you do that? And that says, okay, to, sh to protect the label. So the label and especially the wax here can get damaged if you, if it's a little too close to the box lid. It's like, oh, that was smart. That was smart. All right. And so um, for me, the question is, how much money do I need to pay for the dumb box? I don't need boxes, but hey, that's all right. What do I do with a wooden box? 
I don't have a fireplace anymore. I used to throw it in the fireplace. I can't decompose it. Um, it has to be thrown away in the normal trash. It's just a little bit of a waste. Um, but hey, I'm probably paying 10 euros for the box. So that's also the question is I, if I, I would much rather have an edition without a box. But hey, that's just me. 57.3%, 149 euros. That's okay. Over here, the blue box, ooh, blue. Um, it's just stained. Um, we have this was stained in a brown. This was stained in a blue. So why not? Um, yeah, you can do that. You can. Why not? Um, it looks nice as a contrast on my videos, and looks good in web, web shops and so on. And so you can actually have a good comparison here. And it does look a little bit like I don't know if it's look as exclusive, but it does like it looks a little bit more. I'm going to use the word fancy. All right. So now. Um, this is exclusively Pedro Jimenez and Oloroso, Sherry Casks. First film. This is Sherry Casks from Jerez. Why not put the, lab the names of the casks on the label? Uh, because we, whiskey nerds and geeks, want to know the percentage. I want to know the percentage of this. I'm going to say this is 65%. PX and 35% Oloroso. That's what it tastes like for me. This was different. This has a little bit of Pedro Jimenez, but not as much. It has more Oloroso. I think it has more Muscatel. And he, they might have thrown in a, um, a Mateado or a Mazzanilla or a um, Fino cask as well. They, the team around Anna Buchholz, they make all the whiskey themselves. Great. <laughs> all the grain comes basically within a, let's, I'm going to say 120 kilometer um, radius of the distillery. So they're using German barley. They have a malting um, facility that malts it all for them an hour's drive away. They use, they have four different big products there. They have Ellsburn, which is not peated. They have the Willow Burn, which is wood smoked usually. Um, they have the Emperor's Way, which is peated. And they have something in between, a heart grow, uh, which is um, a mixture of the different things. And uh, this is unpeated. And um, they have their own wood fire pot stills. So that's fantastic. They have two wash stills, they have one spirit still. Every time I go there, there's wood and fire underneath them. They're always distilling. They can make about 40,000 liters a year. And they're not going to expand. They're not going to become the conquerors of Europe or the world with their whiskey. They're content on being maybe the one of the best, if not the best, single malt from Germany. Good. Who needs to conquer Taiwan, India, China, and the U.S., or Mexico, or Brazil, for that matter? Why don't you, if you're a German single malt, stick within your, be the biggest fish in a small pond, is what I like to say sometimes. And I think they're doing a fairly, fairly good job of that. Very, very good connections to bodegas in Spain. Ana goes there visit them at least once a year, shakes hands, get the best casks, wonderful thing. She uses the cask a maximum of two times and then they're gone. And that's all she can use them. Usually they're all for first fill, sometimes the second fill, rarely. Um, but very, very nice, very, very strong cask influenced um, character for the whiskeys. The Color, of course, due to the addition of water to take it down to 48%, compared to cast strength 57.3%, is um, noticeable. On the nose, it's sweet. I get a little bit of grape jelly and a little bit of European oak going on here. Nice. Eh. Meh. This, on the other hand, I smell it and I go, oh yeah, that's what I know. Oh, that's that's Ellsburn. That's the typical Ellsburn character, more Pedro Jimenez, very, very strong cask, sh sherry cask influence. I like <laughs> this. It's like, ah. I think it was Daniel Whittington uh, that actually said in one of his Whiskey Vaults videos, you can create a blend. And if you just add one more thing, it just kind of collapses on itself and it still can be okay. 
but it's no longer um, all the different components. And you can taste the different components, just as a lump of clay. And I almost have the feeling that this is a lump of clay. This is composed. This is just thrown together. And I, I don't want to do Anna un, 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 any injustice here, but maybe this is exactly what she was going for. Or maybe she was just going for how can we get a thousand bottles out of the casks we have? Because 10 years ago, she did lay down stock, but she was not thinking 10 years ago as much as today of, hey, what do I need in 10 years from now? She was thinking, oh, what do I need in four to five and six years from now? Because almost all her products are five, six, maximum eight years of age. And this is the first time she's actually, 10 years ago, decided, hey, we need to put stuff aside for our 10 years. And that is a major, major thing. How many distilleries have not done that? Think Kilholman. How many 10-year-old products have you had from Kilholman? How many age statement products have we had? Not many. Why? Because they kept on, kept on, kept on filling. Filling those bottles with those casts they did for five, six, seven, eight years ago. And they didn't put much aside for the future. And that is a, for the whiskey geeks out there like you and me, that's a little bit of a problem. We love our age statements. And we want the age statements. But the question is, and I'm going to start off with the question I started off with. I'm going to go back to it, circle back to it. How much are we willing to pay? Now, a good 10-year-old whiskey, I didn't say great, I said good. 35 euros. This is 100 more. This is 115 more. This is 100 more. So, age matters, but how much does it matter to our wallets, to our pockets, to our money? All right, so let's try this 48%. Mm. What surprised me the first time I tried this, there's, a, there's still heat in here. Why I was at the distillery, we went through the warehouses, and one of the things um, Anna Buchholz told us was, hey, age is not as important as you think. What's important is um, angel share. So if after five years, let's go to India, let's go to Taiwan, you have 10% angel share per year. That means after five years, you have only 50% of the concentrated flavor of the distillate in the cask. So you go to Scotland, in order to have 50% gone from the angel share at 2% per year, you're going to need 25 years. That's a big difference. Go to America, the first year 10 because you're using new wood, it soaks it up. After that, you have 6 Four to six percent. Let's go for six. So after eight years, you have 50% gone. So now if we're going to evaluate the products on the amount left in the casks after a certain amount of year, and you say, hey, by 50% from Taiwan, that's great. 50% from Scotland, that's great. 50% from America, that's great. 50% from Germany. We're talking here about 5%. Um, angel share. Uh, legally, it's supposed to be four, but let's say it's five. So after 10 years, you only have 50% left. So those whiskeys should taste in the flavor complexity more similar than products that have the same age. Did you understand what I'm doing here? Age might not be as important as evaporation rates angel share are to the product because what evaporates? Does the flavor evaporate? No, water and alcohol evaporates. Do the flavor compounds, the esters, um, the other, the fatty acids, do they evaporate? No, they're still in there. So you have a concentration of the flavor over the years. Interesting thought, isn't it? All right, and so if you have after 10 years, basically only half of what's left in the cask, you compare it to something from Scotland that has about half of what's left in the cask with 2 to 3% per year, you're going to get a much older whiskey. And that might be a value that we should look at more. So, But, of course, we are 
we've been brainwashed by the whiskey society, especially the Scotch Whiskey Association, that age statements matter, and therefore older is better, and therefore we can actually have to we have to pay more for it. Just like the Glen Arachy 15 is maybe 70 euros, and the Glen Arachy 18 is suddenly 170 euros. Why do three years cost 100 euros more? Just blows my mind every single time I think about it. And normally her products, Anna Buchholz products from Ellsburn, cost about 80 euros. They're six plus years age. And suddenly we have this jump to 10, an age statement. Of course, you have to pay for that age statement, but how much is it worth it? This is on a good day, a B minus whiskey, and a normal day, a C plus. There's a little bit of an artificial grape jam moment going in, a grape jelly moment going on in here that I'm not particularly fond of. And I think I'm going to attribute that to Muscatel casks. So I'm saying there's much less of the Pedro Jimenez than here. There's much more of the um, Oloroso, and there's a higher percentage of uh, Muscatel, Muscatel and maybe even a Fino cast thrown in there for whatever reason. This is such a straight, honest representative of Ellsburn for me. A lot of Pedro Jimenez, a little bit of Oloroso, a nice little multi moment going in there. Hmm. What's very interesting is the alcohol here is less bitey, sharp, than here. 57.3, 48%. I diluted this on purpose. I want to have a 48% whiskey to compare the two at equal amounts. All right? So. Hmm. Hmm. Very close to the 48%. A lot more of that Raisin de Pedro Jimenez, wonderful flavors here. Excellent, excellent whiskey. These were the prime casts that were picked first. Then, personal opinion, I have no record of this. What was left over was mixed together, and I have the feeling we put it together and just plopped, and I was like, well, it's 10 years old, just bottle up. And that's what happened over here for me. It's good. This is a B minus whiskey. This is a C plus. Maybe on a good day, this might actually be a B whiskey. But value for money. I was willing and I still am willing to pay 150 for a distillery exclusive and cast strength with 10 years of age. For a 48%, I'm willing to pay 100 euros. Yes. Am I willing to pay 120? Mm, uh, maybe. The next step to 135 is not that much, but this would have been, it's still in the shop. So it's like one of these things, I think at 120, you would have had more people. 100, yes, I would buy it, all right? 120, uh, hurts, but okay. 135, uh, I think I can buy something else. And that's especially when I can get this for just 15 euros more at cast strength at the distillery if I can drive by. The only problem is the distillery is about four hours away, <laughs> one way. So it's an eight hour trip back and forth. So it's not really worth it. And I do have a man close by that might actually be buying more and more distillery exclusive, exclusive bottles for me and sending them, all, sending, me to, sending them to me in the future. Who knows? So if you ever get your hands on an Ellsburn, try it. They are very cast forward. Very. The distillate, the maltiness is there. Um, warm, no warm tubs, sorry. Ah, that's what they don't have. They didn't have room for them warm tubs. They have direct fired stills. They have their own local barley at their own um, malting unit. And they have their own, um, the best casks money can get that they use there and uh, mature there. So they're doing everything right. Non-chilled filtered, uh, no added color, um, just glorified uh, cask color that we have here from the cask influence. So what should 10-year-old craft whiskeys go for? 
write it down in the comments, and that could be a bourbon, it could be a rye, it could be a single malt for America, it could be an Irish whiskey, it could be a German whiskey. What should we be paying for our 10-year-old age statements? And what do you think about the theory that I heard about it's not important how old it is, it's important how much of the angel share has dissipated, has been stolen out of the casks, that that concentrates and matures the whiskey actually quicker or slower, however you want to look at it. Thank you, thank you, thank you for watching, liking, subscribing, and telling others about this crazy guy over in Germany tasting all sorts of whiskeys, many of them you will never ever see or find. All the best. See you soon. Whiskey Jason. Bye-bye.